Your brain needs support. And new Ollie Brainy Chews are a delightful way to take care of your cognitive health. Made with scientifically backed ingredients like Thai ginger, L-theanine, and caffeine. Brainy Chews support healthy brain function and help you find your focus, stay chill, or get energized. Be kind to your mind and get these nootropic chews at ollie.com. That's O-L-L-Y dot com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. This episode is brought to you by La Quinta by Window. Your work can take you all over the place, like Texas. You've never been, but it's going to be great because you're staying at La Quinta by Wyndham. Their free bright side breakfast will give you energy for the day ahead. And after, you can unwind using their free high-speed Wi-Fi. Tonight, La Quinta. Tomorrow, you shine. Book your stay today at LQ.com. The world of medicine, where every decision can change lives, your peace of mind is crucial. This is where Pattern steps in. Imagine insurance made simple, fast, and personalized just for you. With Pattern, you're not just getting disability and life insurance, you're insuring your future and protecting your greatest asset, your income. In the past 10 years, Pattern has transformed the way over 20,000 doctors secure their financial well-being. Discover the simplicity of securing your future at PatternLife.com or click the link in the description. We work hard as physicians to take care of the health and well-being of our patients. But when it comes to our money, do we have the same condition of care? Probably, probably not. Let's change that together. Welcome to the Financial Freedom for Physicians podcast, where we'll fight and advocate for your financial literacy. As always, I'm your host, Dr. Christopher Liu. Thanks for being here. Let's jump into the show. Hey guys, welcome to this week's podcast episode and our podcast is a business podcast where we re-interview entrepreneurs, coaches, business owners, people on the cutting edge. And today I'm happy to introduce Lauren Page out of San Diego, California. And she is an entrepreneur. She helps entrepreneurs with uh, life, with mindset, and I'm really happy to have her on the show. So uh, Lauren, welcome. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, I know you help, especially with the women cohort. We do have a large audience tuning into the podcast um, and talking about resilience and, um, you know, talk about transformation. So talk about your journey, how you got started, and we'll dive right into the conversation. Yeah, absolutely. So I'd like to say I'm a serial entrepreneur back in the lemonade stand days. Uh, I don't think I've actually ever had a, a proper job where I've been hired, but My background was I went to school for nutrition. So it started in the nutrition and fitness world. I opened up a Pilates and bar wellness studio in Charleston, South Carolina when I was 25. And so really just in a really integral season of life where I was so young, I didn't have any other ties, you know, with the family or whatnot. And I could just kind of pour in all of that sweat equity into building a community, into building a wellness studio that was really thriving in our community. And then ultimately, um, my then husband brought us to San Diego, California. So I was kind of at this crossroads. You know, I think a lot of people would have just kind of closed up shop and relocated. And I thought, well, never really sold a business before, but let's see how that process works. So I sold the brick and mortar. It went really, really well. And it was that that catapulted me into starting really trying to bring this wellness and fitness thing online which is the space that I've been in for the past, gosh, eight or nine years. And that morphed over the past few years into more holistic life and business coaching. So I got certified to be a life coach so that we could chat about more things besides just food and fitness. And then ultimately what that transformed into was because I had done the brick and mortar thing and I had done the online thing, a lot of uh, entrepreneurs, women especially, but um, coaches, consultants, consultants, marketing executives, wellness entrepreneurs were coming to me more so for business advice. So it's kind of this like, I'm um, part business consultant, part life coach. Mm. 
Yeah, it's a really fat, and I love um, the best entrepreneurs I've talked to. They have um, they have all these really fascinating experience, and they combine it together, which is what you did. And um, you know, I love I love Charleston, South Carolina. And um, one thing that's uh, talking about is um, you know just this idea of um, with the resilience and change, and you've moved over twelve times. You've built you know successful businesses. Um, so, what are some top strategies for adapting to change, building resilience, especially for, um, you know, underrepresented you know, women in the entrepreneurial space? Yeah, that's a great question. So I'm going to give you two answers. One is if you're in the thick of it, if you are truly in a season of major life transition, of adversity, um, I think finding the small daily things that you can quite literally check off a list. So maybe it is a fitness program that You sign up for some eight week thing that you can just check off every day. Or maybe it's something like, I'm going to read 10 pages every single day of uh, personal or professional development, but it's got to be something that you know, you've got to check off, check off the list because during those times of adversity, like we're just seeking for something we can, quite frankly, we can control some, some semblance of consistency and normalcy when there's a lot of other things that are so far out of our control. So that's like, if you're in the acute season If you are just like looking to shoot big and big dreams and the whole thing, I think really having that long-term vision where, you know, it is the thing that's going to get you out of bed on the hard days where it's just as easy to say, oh, it's not really a big deal if I like do the things that move the needle forward in my business or not. This episode is brought to you by ShipStation. If you run an e-commerce business, you know how much work it takes to produce something great while dealing with complicated shipping issues. That's why over 130,000 companies have turned to ShipStation, an innovative tool that allows you to focus less on shipping and more on building your brand. With ShipStation, you can manage orders, label printing, reporting, and customer service on one easy-to-use dashboard. You'll reduce warehouse costs with reliable enterprise solutions and save thousands on shipping costs with discounts up to 89% off. Plus, you can effortlessly import orders from everywhere you sell online. So, turn your shipping challenges into opportunities for growth. Go to ShipStation.com and use code POD to sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code POD. Yeah, and I love this idea of uh, short-term and long-term because, you know, sometimes like, uh, you know, especially I'm very impatient. So, like, something that, you know, will take, like, couple years and it's just some days you don't see anything but it's like you just gotta just check it off check it off you know um my wife says uh another day another dollar which is yeah <laughs> just like yeah. um and then uh then and i love this idea of um the other thing is talking about this uh, idea where basically entrepreneurs were trained to um like just hustle and grind and just you have to Talk about celebrating like wins, even like small wins, like you win one day to talk about that. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think there's seasons for everything. I've been in the entrepreneurial game, like really full time, if we're going to call it that for about 13 years. And I have been in seasons of extreme hustle and that kind of thing. And it gets a bad rap, but it also kind of got me to where I am. So At the same time, like I really preach that there's going to be seasons where things are more lax. There's going to be seasons where like, yeah, maybe you are having to wake up at 5 a.m. and get a couple hours of work in before the kids go off to school. Um, And and just know that keeping the main priority, I think really there's one to three things per day that are truly going to move the needle forward for whatever the goal is that you can really cut a lot of fluff. You know, it's funny, one of the big things I hear a lot because I work with women and a lot of them are mothers. I can tell you the best thing that happened for my business was becoming a mom because it forced me to cut out all the fluff. I only had a certain amount of hours per day that we have childcare that I had to get my work done. in. I could no longer just be this like ongoing entrepreneur all day where I didn't really have any like clock in, clock out hours. I was always kind of like working, but not now I know I have to get all of my work done between this hour and this hour. So I think if you can put some like time constraints on it, it also makes a big difference. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, my, my follow-up question is um, this idea of mindset. Cause um, you know, 
coaching and helping clients achieve their goals, it starts with mindset shifts. And so you've um, overcoming internal blocks, past traumas. So kind of discuss some of the common mindset challenges you and your clients face and how you guide them towards these small um, pivotal shifts. Yeah. Yeah. I think like you had spoken about the quick wins is a big deal, but also, you know, we hear we're supposed to seek support or there's a lot of noise out there. Everyone's like listening to and we're sitting here, I'm about to say, everyone's listening to all these different podcasts as we're on a podcast interview. Yep. But one of the things that I like to really help people with is when you seek support for whatever this next, either this next level or overcoming trauma is go all in on one person. Because you, if you get a lot of mixed messages, you're not going to get far in any of the systems. Most of the time, what's out there is usually pretty valuable. So when people say, I love to listen to podcasts, like I'd rather them binge all of your podcast than shop around to a bunch of different ones or to like truly read a book from start to finish if you're looking for more free offerings. If you do have the financial wherewithal to invest in a mentor or a coach, I, it is the cheapest way to learn. Mm -hmm. you, will, you will move mountains so much quicker and so much more efficiently if you hire a coach, a support system, uh, a therapist, a mentor, that's really the way to go. Yeah. Talk, and also, um, you know, one of these, I was talking with another um, entrepreneur and they were talking about the power of, of uh, masterminds and because um, yeah. you were talking about, I find that, you know, after working with a coach, it's like, it's very in inspiring, empowering, and you get a lot and you get that, those quick wins and uh, talk about this power of masterminds. Yeah. You know, it's funny when I went to hire my very first life coach, which I didn't really know what that was in time, I was in a really hard season. I had just, I was going through a divorce unexpectedly. I lost my mom unexpectedly. So like a lot of like really needy life stuff had come in. And I remember saying to the coach, like, okay, I signed me up for a year of one-on-ones or however this works. And she was like, you know, I think you should be in my mastermind. And I was like, I'm, I don't want to be in a group chat. <laughs> um, and what I found was now it's like my most favorite way to learn because you get so much insight from more, especially if you're in a container where either people are in the same industry. So it's a business mastermind or they're in the same season of life. So it's like a lot of shared experiences. You move so much quicker and you have so much more collaborative insight. The other thing that's really interesting is, you know, like say in a group coaching experience, you might be on a call and say like, well, that person's problem doesn't really apply to me. But then also you start listening and you're like, oh, that's a huge blind spot in my life that I wasn't even aware of. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. Um, and those are kind of the things that'll really propel yourself. And, you know, it's a, like a coach is like, it's a like, you know, a significant investment, but it's like, it'll save you years and years of just, you know, struggling and, you know, dilly dallying and they can point you on the right direction and, you know, masterminds are kind of like that fuel that sustains you. And um, uh, the other question I have is, um, you know, as a as a coach and life coach, and um, especially in this wellness space, um, as people grow and evolve, um, you know, we were talking about this and where you have to almost like this point where you actually have to not, you have to be selective with who you tell your uh, goals to because um, you don't want to tell it to the wrong people. And, you know, I've learned, you know, as on this journey, just to keep my mouth shut, except to the, like the one or two people that I really entrust. So talk about this idea where you have to kind of, um, you know, choose your inner circle and kind of let go of um, the, you know, the naysayers. Yeah, I think that's pretty critical. It's funny. I went through, a, I started a, I went from owning the, the gym to going into direct sales and I had never done sales. I thought everyone thought I was going to be part of some pyramid scheme. I was just super nervous about it. Um, so what I did was two things. One is I really kept blinders on, kind of what you're saying. Like it's almost like you're in a swimming lane and you're just looking straight ahead. Because I knew that if people were coming at me with judgments or even just loving questions, you know, our family and friends are typically the ones that come at us the hardest because they're concerned we're doing something different than we've done before. Um I didn't think I'd have all the answers right away. So I needed to build my confidence. So I'd say, if you're starting a new business, like kind of keep, keep your eye on the prize, keep working the business as you gain more confidence in what you're doing, 
then you'll be able to more naturally talk about what you're doing, answer people's questions if they're coming from like a place of just lovingly concern. Um, and the other thing too is kind of going back to that support system. And this doesn't even necessarily mean you have to like hire a coach, but you've got to be surrounded by people who are just one step in front of you on that same path. Like I look at it for my space, if I go back to that direct sales experience, you know, my mentor was number one in the entire company. It was a billion dollar company. And she was number one in a billion dollar company, which is very, very impressive. But as a new, a new person coming into this, as much as I loved her and we have a really great relationship, I couldn't really relate to her success yet. So I found this little cohort of peers that were just, just a step above me. So I knew that it was possible. I thought, okay, well, I might not be able to be number one in a billion dollar company, but I can certainly get to this next level and I can get to that next level. So you've got to keep those, that tight inner circle close by. Yeah. So well said. And um, I love this idea of uh, choosing your peer group and, um, you know, uh, also, it's just kind of protecting, you know, your ideas and, you know, because uh, it's like when you're an entrepreneur, you don't have all the answers and you kind of have to be selective. Um, and then the next question a lot of individuals have is as entrepreneurs, they're dealing with their past traumas and their past failures and their social conditioning. And how do they, how do you um, block that out? And how do you listen to the things in your head and you know, your worries and your fears, like how do you sort all that out? Yeah. Have you heard that quote that's like <laughs> entrepreneurship is just personal development wrapped up in a job? Like, <laughs> like you're the only profession that like has to do some sort of personal or professional development. Yeah. Um, well, you know, there's, if we look at it as two different things, one, that entrepreneurship is, is the long game. So there's, if you are going through something traumatic, there might be days where your 100% is not necessarily what you would call your normal 100%. And it just is what it is. You've got to give yourself some grace. On the other side of it, if you are somebody who like deals a little bit better with more of the, like the tough love model, if you will, um, people say like, how do I build confidence? How, like, is it, what book do you recommend? What <laughs> book do you recommend? The only way that you can build confidence is by doing. So this goes back to... Even if you've got stuff, even if you've got, we all have drama to some degree. And I know it's not fair that some people have really, really horrible things. Um, I've had seasons of my life where I've had really, really horrible things. And even that is not bad as others. So you can't really like trauma compare. But if there's hard things going on in your life, I think you've got to establish for yourself and everybody is different, your baseline. So like, what are the things in your business that absolutely have to get done? This is a pretty trivial example, but... Yeah. Um, recently we just relocated within our same city. We just moved and you saw my bio. I am a kid that moved around every couple of years. Like I am good at moving. It doesn't, it doesn't traumatize me. Like my nervous system is fine, but this is the first time I have moved. We have a set of two-year-old twin toddlers. Um, so it's the first time that we have moved <laughs> where I'm running a business. I have twin toddlers. I have a romantic partner that like, we're all managing each other's expectations over this. And it was challenging. And I had to just come to terms with the fact that for three weeks of this kind of upheaval, I was going to take really impeccable care of my clients, my paying clients. I was going to commit to my newsletter cadence that I always do and show up to my normal networking. And this was not the time where I was going to in like put in some big social media strategy or go above and beyond and like other sales tactics because it just wasn't a season of growth for that, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. It's like, um, there's like seasons and, um, you know, even when I was first starting out, like, cause I realized, you know, there's like, you know, the first, first quarter, there's just like, you know, kind of do it. And then like there's tax season, then there's like the summer months when you can like really focus. And then there's like the third quarter, you know, you're winding down and, um, and kind of pigeonholing what you can do in those time periods. Um, yeah. which is, uh, um, you know, uh, so talk about, um, you know, some of your, the work that you're doing with your clients, some success stories and how can people reach out to you? I know you've got a huge following on Instagram and, um, on YouTube as well. And, um, how can they work with you? Yeah. Yeah. So I do work with clients both one-on-one -on -one and, you know, we're kind of practicing what we just talked about from practice what you preach. I love a group container. So I have a signature six month group container program. Um, it is aimed towards women, but we 
we really break down your business goals and we work on the whole facet of life. So I would say most people show up to increase their business revenue, which we do. Um, and then they don't realize that they've like all of a sudden cleaned up their nutrition, their, their sex life is better. They're communicating with their children better. Um, just they have a deep understanding of who they are and how they operate in the world. So if that is something that you are looking to do, the best way to find me is, yeah, probably either through my website, lauren-page.com or on IG, laurenpage.says. And um, you can just shoot me a DM and say, you found me on your show and I would love to connect. I always do complimentary consultations. Yeah. And I really enjoyed this conversation because a lot of the um, audience are female entrepreneurs. So I think they can really re resonate and relate to your story. And uh, so uh, reach out to Lauren, follow her and like her on socials uh, and check out her services. And with that, thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me. Doctors dedicate their lives to caring for others. It's time someone took care of you. Visit PatternLife.com to simplify your path to peace of mind. PatternLife.com, simplifying your insurance journey. I'm excited that you made it for another episode. You are truly the best. If you've been following the show for a while, you know that my passion is to bring you the education you need to find your path to financial freedom. Please come back week after week for new content, new resources, and great guests. Until then, if you haven't already, please be sure to check out the website, www.drchrisluemdphd.com for more support. I'll see you next week.